and welcome to the Geomystic channel. Today's lesson is going to cover some properties that are specific to certain parallelograms. If you'd like to take some notes as we go, head down to the description where you will find a link to a guided notes worksheet that you can print out. These notes will follow right along with this video. Now in the previous lesson, we covered some general parallelogram properties that hold true for all variations of parallelograms. You can find uh, the link to that video right up there. But now we're going to focus specifically on the rhombus and the rectangle. So let's start with the rhombus. Definition of a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. Okay, so a parallelogram, meaning it's got both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. So parallel here and parallel there. And definition of a rhombus is that all four sides are congruent. So there is your rhombus. Now note that a rhombus um, does include a square. So a square is technically a rhombus because it's a parallelogram of four congruent sides. So these properties also uh, apply to squares as well. So property number one, in a rhombus, the diagonals of a rhombus, and a diagonal once again is just a segment that connects two non-adjacent vertices. So the diagonal of a rhombus is going to bisect two angles of that rhombus. So this diagonal right here through the middle will bisect these two angles at those two vertices right there. Now this is fairly simple to prove. Um, what we've done when, we, when we've drawn that diagonal is we cut this rhombus into two triangles. And because of the reflexive property, these two triangles here, I can mark that side in the middle is congruent to itself. I have these two triangles congruent to each other by side, side, side. So all three sides in this um, triangle correspond to the three sides that are congruent in this triangle. So because of side, 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 I know that um, once the triangles are proven congruent, all the other parts, namely the angles in these um, two triangles that correspond with one another are also congruent. So I know that this angle right here, because it corresponds to this angle in this triangle, those two angles have to be congruent. And then the same thing down here, I know that these two angles also have to be congruent to one another. Now, um, because it is a parallelogram and the opposite angles of any parallelogram are congruent, so like these two angles here, this whole angle here has to be congruent to this whole angle here, it's true that really all four of these angles are congruent. So instead of making two arcs here, I'm just gonna make one. Okay, so these two angles here are actually congruent to these two angles down there as well. So all four of these angles are the same. You can think of this uh, diagonal in the middle as a line of symmetry to where everything's gonna match up on both sides. Okay, so the property is that the diagonal of a rhombus is gonna bisect those two angles. It's gonna cut them in half. Okay, now property number two. Sticking with the idea of these diagonals. Okay, so I've got another rhombus. Go ahead and mark that all four sides are the same. Okay, this time I'm gonna draw both diagonals. So I've got diagonal one, diagonal two. Okay, so the second property of rhombuses is that these diagonals are going to be perpendicular to one another. Okay, if you don't remember, perpendicular just means they cross at 90 degree angles. So we're saying that in a rhombus, that intersection of those two diagonals, that's gonna be a 90 degree angle all around. Okay, a couple ways to prove this one. One way, probably the quickest way, is to remember that in, again, any parallelogram, the diagonals do bisect each other. So I know that this segment here, this portion of the diagonal and this portion, those are gonna be congruent. And then this portion here, congruent to this portion here. So the diagonals bisect each other in any parallelogram, uh, which is still true in a rhombus. Once I know that the diagonals bisect each other, I've got my four triangles here. And my four triangles, if you notice, look at the sides on each one. We've got a side marked, two side, three side. All three sides of all of these triangles are again congruent by side, side, side. Okay, so once I know that all four of these triangles are congruent, I know that all their corresponding parts are congruent at CPCTC. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Meaning that I can say, for example, if I just look at, um, focus on these two triangles. So triangle number one, triangle number two. Okay, because of CPCTC, I know that this angle right there corresponds to this angle right here. So those two angles have to be congruent. Okay, 
Now notice that these two angles are not only congruent, it's also a linear pair, two angles that are right next to each other on a straight line. And a linear pair, if you remember that, straight line is always 180 degrees. So I've got two angles that are the same that also have to add up to 180. So what's the only way that two angles could be congruent and also supplementary? That means they've got to be 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. It's the only way you can have two angles that are the same that add up to 180. Okay, so therefore these two angles here really have to be 90. And I can do the same thing all the way around. Okay, these two angles are also supplementary, also congruent. So that makes 90s all the way around. Okay, so again, property number two, the diagonals of a rhombus are always perpendicular. You're gonna get 90 degree angles there in the middle. Okay, so those are the two properties specific to rhombuses. Let's move on to the rectangle. Okay, so again, let's go ahead and define what a rectangle is. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. And then four right angles. There's your definition of a rectangle. Okay, so we got one property of rectangles, and again, square is also a rectangle, so this also applies to a square. We're gonna start again with the diagonals. So the diagonals of a rectangle, I'm gonna draw both of them. I'm gonna go ahead and put some points here, A, B, C, D. Okay, so the property that we're gonna talk about with a rectangle is that the diagonals of a rectangle, so we're looking at A, C, D, B, diagonals of a rectangle are going to be congruent. Okay, so we're gonna say that AC has to be congruent to DB. Okay, now to prove this, again, we're gonna utilize these triangles that we've created in here. Go ahead and highlight two triangles in this situation. Okay, so the triangles that we're gonna look at, triangle number one, we're gonna look at ADC, so this triangle right here. And we're gonna also look at triangle um, BDC, this triangle over here. So they kind of overlap on top of one another, but if you can kind of focus on those two triangles, you got the big right triangle here, big right triangle over there. Okay, so what I wanna look at um, to be able to prove that these two diagonals are congruent is again, these two triangles being congruent to one another using CPCTC um, to get any other corresponding parts. So starting with triangle ADC, because it's a parallelogram, I know opposite sides are congruent. That's true for all parallelograms, so I can mark those. And again, all right angles. So I've got this triangle here, which kind of looks like this, if I kind of draw it off to the side here. I've got A, D, C. Markings I have here is that that segment, that angle. Okay, that's what it looks like there. But I've also got the other triangle here, which kind of looks the same. It's got really the same markings in it. So I've got this, and this is B, C, D. Okay, so I've got these two triangles. And notice what I have marked here. I've already got side, angle, side. Okay, and these two triangles, I've got a side, an angle, and a side. They're congruent by side, angle, side. Thus, if they're congruent by side, angle, side, any other corresponding parts have to be congruent. CPCTC says that, namely AC, I know this segment and this segment, BD, have to be the same, which are my two diagonals here. Okay, so using side, angle, side, and CPCTC, I can see that those two diagonals, okay, the hypotenuses of those two right triangles have to be congruent, thus proving our property that the diagonals of any rectangle must be congruent. Okay, so again, reminder, all the properties we're talking about today also apply to squares because a square is a rectangle as well as a rhombus. All right, a couple short examples here. We'll go back to the rhombus to start. Okay, so let's say that's a rhombus. All four sides the same. And let's go ahead and draw a diagonal through there. So the examples that we're gonna to do today are really gonna mainly focus on the angles inside of each of these figures here. So let's go ahead and give a 108 degree angle here, and maybe we're looking for a few. So angle one, angle two, angle three. 
Okay, so utilizing these properties that we've talked about along with the general properties of parallelograms, we can find the measures of all, all these angles here pretty quickly. Let's start with angle one. So the measure of angle one. Opposite angles in any parallelogram are congruent, so if I have 108 degrees here, I know that angle one also has to be 108 degrees. So 108 right there. Okay, now we've also got triangles. It's easy to utilize uh, the triangles when we're trying to find angles. So if we start, we'll just go with angle two. In this top triangle right here, I've got 108 degrees. We just said that the diagonal of a rhombus is gonna bisect the two angles. So really we know that these angles being bisected are the same, these angles are the same, and all four angles happen to be equal because of that property that opposite angles in a parallelogram are congruent. So once I find one, or in this case angle two, once I find one of these angles, I really know all four. So how do we do that? It's an isosceles triangle, these two angles are the same. I know 180 degrees is the total of any triangle, so if I've got 180 degrees, subtract out the 108 that I already have, what's left is 72 degrees. So between these two angles, I've got 72 degrees. Since they're the same, I can just divide that by two, and that leaves us with our answer of 36. So I know that the measure of angle two is 36 degrees, which is here. Because it is a rhombus and all four of these are the same, I know that angle three is also 36. Okay, so the measure of angle one, 108, and the measure of angle two and three in this case, both 36. Good. Okay, let's do one more rhombus. And this time let's get both diagonals in here. So I'm gonna try, let's try this. It's kind of a diamond shaped rhombus. I'm gonna get both diagonals drawn this time. And this time let's find four angles. So we'll look for angle one, angle two, three and four. And I'll give you that one, 56 degrees down there. Okay, with a rhombus, if you have both diagonals, it's best probably to start in the center where those two diagonals intersect, because that second property with rhombus is we said that any rhombus will have perpendicular diagonals. So those diagonals in the middle where they intersect, you know that those are always gonna be 90 degrees. So that angle one up there, that's gonna be 90 degrees. Okay, always start in the middle. Okay, next, um, probably best to start in this triangle right here, because we already have two angles of the three in this triangle. So I've got 56 degrees, I've got 90 degrees. I'm trying to find that third angle, number three. Add up what you have, subtract from 180. So I've got 56 and 90. 146. Subtract, what do you have left? 34. So again, triangle is 180, 90 and 56, make 146, subtract that from 180, you get angle three. So the measure of angle three is gonna be 34 degrees. Okay, so utilizing properties of a rhombus, if this angle is 34, because the diagonals bisect the angles, those are the same as those. So that tells us that angle four, measure of angle four, also gonna be 34 degrees. And finally, let's go back up to number two. It's not just this diagonal that bisects the angles. That diagonal bisects the angles as well. So this being 56 also makes angle two 56. And there you go. So what you'll find with these rhombuses is you get a lot of congruent pieces because you have those four congruent triangles. You get to translate a lot of your angles into different places here. Okay, so let's skip over to a rectangle example. Okay, so rectangle, poorly drawn. Right angles, opposite sides congruent, so don't forget about all those properties. Let's go ahead and get the diagonals in, like so. And let's go 
22 degrees and then just a bunch one two three four five okay so five angles knowing one angle right up here 22 degrees okay so again the properties of parallelograms all apply to rectangles um, so things like lines of symmetry think about um, parallel lines that sort of thing diagonals of um, this rectangle are congruent we got some congruent triangles here we're going to utilize all that stuff so I'm going to start measure of angle one I think that line of symmetry right down the middle I can um, reflect this over these two angles in this triangle here are going to be the same um, so I've got 22 translate that over to angle one probably the best place to start okay next I'm gonna go for this angle right here um, where those diagonals intersect because I've got this triangle I've already got two angles 22 and 22 to get the third angle there I'm gonna subtract those two angles from 180 so 22 plus 22 is 44 subtract that from 180 and I've got 136 so this angle right here even though it's not one of my numbered angles uh, that's gonna help me out so angle um, third angle in that triangle right there 136 now what I can do here is I can see that these vertical angles Okay, 136 and angle 3 vertical angles are always the same Okay, so I can hop down to angle 3 say so that's 136 I'm gonna hop over to angle 2 Okay, notice this corner. This is a 90 degree angle. It is a rectangle and I've got angle 1 is 22 Angle 2 and angle 1 are complementary. They have to add up to 90 degrees. So 90 degrees minus 22. You get 58. So angle 2 is 58 degrees. Next, I'm going to go with some alternate interior angles here. So once again, a parallelogram. Your opposite sides are parallel to each other. You got a transverse down in the middle. So I got 58 degrees here. Angle four and angle two are alternate interior. And when the lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are always the same. So if angle two is 58, I know angle four, also 58. Last one, angle five. A couple ways to get that. I can utilize the triangle here. Uh, I'm just gonna use this linear pair. We've got two angles right next to each other on a straight line right there. 136 and angle five are supplementary, have to add up to 180. So 180 minus 136, kind of already did this over here, is gonna be 44. So angle five is 44 degrees. There we go. So you notice that these types of problems, you're gonna utilize lots of old concepts like alternate interior angles, vertical angles, linear pairs, um, Use your lines of symmetry to kind of translate angles over to find their matches. All right, that's it. That'll do it for today's lesson. Thank you uh, for watching. Thumb it up if it was helpful and subscribe to see more. We'll see you next time.